The obturator nerve supplies the medial part of the thigh, and blockade of its branches can be very useful in a number of situations. In this video, we'll discuss the anatomy, sonoanatomy, technique, and tips and tricks for performing ultrasound-guided obturator nerve block. The obturator nerve is a branch of the lumbar plexus and originates from the roots of L2, 3, and 4. It passes through the substance of the psoas muscle before emerging on the medial side of psoas. It then passes through the obturator canal into the thigh, splitting as it does into an anterior and posterior branch. Here's the adductor brevis muscle. Now, brevis acts as a splitter. The anterior branch of obturator travels anteriorly to it, and the posterior branch goes, well, posteriorly. Okay, now we're going to add another muscle. Deep to brevis is the adductor magnus. The posterior branch is sandwiched in the plane between brevis and magnus. And then superficial to brevis is the adductor longus. The anterior branch is sandwiched between these two muscles. And then for good measure, here's pectineus muscle out laterally. If we put a linear ultrasound probe in the inguinal crease and scan medial to the femoral vessels, this is what we'd see. We have pectineus laterally with its characteristic chevron shape to its medial edge. Then we have a three-layer sandwich medial to that. Adductor longus, brevis, and magnus. You can see nice clear fascial planes between them. A memory aid for remembering the order of the adductor muscles is Alabama. Adductor longus, adductor brevis, adductor magnus. Once we've identified the muscles, it's easy to find the nerves. The anterior branch is usually found at the confluence of longus, brevis, and pectineus. It should appear as a hyperechoic structure within that fascial plane. The posterior branch is typically located in the fascial plane between brevis and magnus. To block these, we'll advance a needle from the lateral side and deposit local in each of these planes. The obturator nerve innervates the medial femur, including the medial part of the femoral head and hip joint. Because of that, it's been promoted as a good block for pain relief following femoral neck fracture. There's also a small part of the ischium near the obturator foramen that's supplied by this nerve. As for myotomes, the obturator innervates the three adductor muscles, gracilis, and sometimes the pectineus muscle, essentially the medial compartment of the thigh. Now, the obturator doesn't supply a lot of skin. If anything, it's a medial portion of the thigh just above the knee, but this seems to be completely absent in 50% of people, so it's not terribly relevant clinically. All right, given this picture, what might we use the obturator nerve block for? Well, the first is to knock out the thigh adductor muscle group during bladder tumor resection under spinal anesthesia. The obturator nerve runs immediately adjacent to the bladder, and electrical cautery from inside can stimulate this nerve and cause the adductor muscles to fire. The resulting jerky motion increases the risk of the instrument perforating the bladder wall. That's a big deal because of the potential for seeding tumor within the abdomen. In fact, multiple studies and two systematic reviews have found that when spinal anesthesia is used, the addition of obturator block reduces perforation rates, hospital length of stay, and cancer recurrence rates at 12 months. We use this block frequently for anesthesia and analgesia for above knee amputation. While there's little skin coverage expected, there will be trauma to muscle and femur that is innervated by the obturator. We'll combine this with femoral, sciatic, and lateral femoral cutaneous nerve blocks to provide complete surgical anesthesia in these often quite sick patients. Obturator block has also had good success when the ACL repair is being done with a gracilis autograft. If it's a hamstrings autograft, on the other hand, it doesn't seem to help much. And then another big use for obturator block, or even ablation, is for the relief of spastic adductor muscles in spinal cord injury, stroke, and cerebral palsy. Relaxation of these muscles allows for better perineal hygiene and reduces complication rates in these patients. All right, let's get to it. We'll position the patient's supine with the lower limb frog-legged. This will allow us to get the probe into the medial groin. The needle will advance from the lateral aspect in most cases, but you can do this out of plane for those so inclined. We start with the femoral artery and vein and then slide the probe medially. A little tilting back and forth helps us find the three adductors, pectineus, as well as the two nerves. Taking care not to hit the femoral vein, the needle enters from lateral and is advanced to the posterior branch first so the injectate won't distort the visualization of the other nerve. You can see the plane opening up nicely here with 5 mils of local. We'll then withdraw and reorient on a more shallow glide path so we're aiming at the anterior branch. We'll advance and click into the plane where the anterior branch lives and deposit another 5 mils here. That's also opening up nicely. Finally, we scan back and forth a little at the end to celebrate and to confirm we're happy with that spread. The dose we'll use is between 5 and 7 mils. It doesn't take much to block these small nerves. Here are some obturator tips and tricks. 
First, this is a fascial plane block, like all blocks really, but the point is that sometimes the nerve visualization is poor, in which case you can reliably locate the correct plane and deposit the local. Nerve stimulation is also used commonly to confirm that the smudge you see on the screen is in fact the nerve. Second, there are some decently sized vessels that run in these fascial planes. People have reported clinically significant hematomas after obturator block from inadvertent puncture, so be careful and use Doppler to plan your needle path. Finally, we used to use these extensively for hip and knee indications. The anterior branch sends fibers to the hip and the posterior to the knee, and it was effective, but we have more targeted blocks these days that are simply more effective. In hip surgery, for example, the peng or fascia iliaca blocks are hard to beat, and ditto with the adductor, eye pack, and geniculars for knee.